you clicked on this video, you're probably looking into making your own go-kart. Well, you're in the right place, because about a year ago, we started making our very own go-kart, Hammerhead. Go! Yeah! It's insane. That is so good. In this video, we're gonna tell you everything you need to build your own go-kart. The first thing you have to think about when building a go-kart is what type of go-kart you're gonna make. For Hammerhead, we kind of made a race car kind of style, nothing really super protective, but at the same time kind of quick. You could also make something like the Murray, which is an off-road cart with a roll cage and off-road tires. It's important to know what type of frame you're gonna make because it plays a crucial part in designing your frame and what parts you'll need, which is the first step. Now, you need to know what type of tubing you want. Hammerhead here uses square tubing and that's really easy to work with. The Murray uses this round tubing which will be harder to work with and you'll, you might need things like a pipe bender. In this video we're mostly going to focus on how to build a go-kart like Hammerhead. If you build an off-roader like the Murray you got to think more about your roll cage. For the frame of a go-kart like Hammerhead the things you have to think about are where you're going to mount steering, where you're going to mount your seats. That's going to help for your cross members right here. We need a cross member here to mount our steering wheel. We need cross members here to mount our seat. Maybe you don't have a welder available. You can do bolt-on frames. It requires a lot more time and some more money. But if you don't have a welder and you'd rather do this, that's totally okay. It makes sense. Another thing to think about is the thickness of your tubing. We have used one inch tubing and it's been perfect for us. We've never had an issue with it. It's super strong, but it's also more cost effective than thicker tubing. You really don't need that much. On this website called Go Power Sports, you can find engine plates that you can buy and just weld onto your frame or bolt onto your frame if you'd like to. It will work perfectly. Now, another thing that you need that will mount to your frame is your floorboard. We have just a sheet of aluminum that goes on the bottom of our cart and it's worked great. So now it's time to get parts for your go-kart. If you need help finding any parts, we're gonna leave a lot of links in the description. That'll help you out a lot. The most important part of your go-kart is how you power it. The question we got asked the most is where are we gonna get an engine? What engine are we gonna get? And it's really important that you don't get a bad one. We ended up choosing the Predator 212 from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is really easy for us to get to. It is the most available place in our area to get an engine like this. And it also has a lot of aftermarket support, as you can tell by our little upgrades we did, like an aftermarket air filter and an aftermarket exhaust. Now, wheels and tires are something that you really should not cheap out on. These are, again, what keeps you on the road and what keeps you safe. So, we ended up choosing rain tires because we're not always on ideal conditions to drive slick or like kind of baldish tires on. This funnels through water very well. We also chose these rims that are used on a lot of shifter carts and nicer carts because they're very easily available and they fit perfectly with these wet tires, which we'll link in the description. After the wheels and tires, next up is the rear axle and the steering. When it comes to the rear axle, depending on your budget, it's going to depend on how easy it is to get the mounts that you need. We kind of cheaped out on our axle and it ended up having the wrong mounts for our rims, which caused a bunch of problems. So you want to make sure that whatever wheels you get, you match your rear axle to those and get the right mounts. Your rear axle might also come in a kit, which ours did, and it came with brakes and a sprocket which was very handy because we didn't have to buy those separately. Now, when it comes to steering, more times than not, this will also come in a kit. We got a rack and pinion steering, which is less common on go-karts, but it worked out for us. We had to modify our tie rods that mounted to our spindles and our hubs inside the rims. Our steering also came with a steering wheel, which was very handy. For us, mounting the steering wheel, we used a little coupling right here, but we wanna make sure that when you build your frame, that is at the right angle and at the right height for you. For mounting our rack and pinion, we used these U-hooks and we, we had to raise it up because of the way the rack and pinion is. So we used some nuts as some spacers to prop it up. It works great. Now it's time to talk about the small stuff. Some things are like the seat and the slider. That's really important, especially if multiple people driving your go-karts. Maybe you have younger kids who aren't as tall as you are. Sliders are very important. You also want to find a nice, comfortable seat. We might need to change ours out in the future just because it's kind of tight and compact. It's for a tricycle. This is not a tricycle. Really? Yeah, I know. I was surprised by it the first time I drove it. I was like, 
Huh. Anyways. <laughs> Some other things you have to think about are a clutch. We chose a centrifugal clutch because it's very basic, simple, very low maintenance, and it connects our chain to our sprocket. You can also get a different sprocket if you'd like. Another option for a centrifugal clutch is a, called a torque converter. It, it is more optimal for power, but it does require a lot more fabricating to fit it perfectly to your go kart. Now, you may have noticed we have two pedals, but we also have this brake handle right here. No, we're not doing a lot of handbrake drifting, but we originally planned to have two pedals, one for brake, one for gas, but our cable was not long enough. That's something you have to think about. We have a gas pedal, which also, we, you need to get a throttle cable, which is, should be long enough. You should measure it out so that it fits to your engine and properly gives you power every time you step on the gas. All right, the last part that you absolutely need is paint. This will prevent rust and make it look so much better. We chose a gloss patriotic blue for ours, but make it your own. Now it's time for my favorite part, tools. So you're gonna need a lot of tools for this. If you have family members or friends that you can borrow from, this is probably important, especially to keep your cost down. But at the end of the day, you might need these tools down the line. So might as well get them. An important thing to get is like a mechanics toolkit and some wrenches. A lot of the hardware on these go-karts have a lot of carryover with what you'd use in a car. So it's important that you have a nice mechanics toolkit. We'll leave some linked in the description that you guys can use as well. You also need a lot of power tools. An impact driver and a drill driver are really important in the respective bits they come with. You can also use with your impact driver a lot of the mechanics toolkit that you got. Some other power, power tools include a angle grinder and a sawzall. It makes cutting a lot easier and a lot less time consuming. It just is a very nice luxury to have while you're building a go-kart. This isn't really tools, but it's something that you should still keep on hand. It's fluids like brake fluid and oil for your brakes and your engine. It's a very good maintenance thing to do. Always keep up with it if you want to keep your go-kart running and on the road. Who wouldn't? Something that is very important once your go-kart is built is maintenance. So here's what you need to do. Your chain needs to be loose, of course, but also your centrifugal clutch. But you wanna make sure you do it in the right spot because otherwise your clutch won't engage. So down here in between where this uh, snap ring is, that's where you want to oil your clutch. Otherwise, well, it makes some noises. Really? I don't think we've ever had that problem. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing you have to do is grease your steering, especially once you like first build your go-kart. That will keep your steering nice and smooth. Another thing is your brakes. You want to keep brake fluid in. We've had to do that once now. Lastly, once you have built your go-kart and you've driven it for a while, you want to go through the whole thing and make sure all your bolts are nice and tight. All the vibrations from go-karting will slowly unscrew, especially when you've just built it. All right, this next part is completely optional. These are just some fun upgrades that we've done. And it's a great thing to get an excuse to work on the go-kart. And also, for the most part, for the most part, they are cost-effective, they're not super expensive. First, we'll start with engine upgrades. Like we said earlier, we did an aftermarket exhaust and aftermarket air filter. This is also known as a stage one kit. This is, will improve a lot of your performance. It'll get it sounding better. You also have to do a preventative maintenance uh, by jetting the carburetor since these are not electronic fuel injection. You have to kind of retune the carburetor a little bit. You can also go, go through tons of upgrades, do a different gas tank. You can even take off the governor, which is something that we're gonna be doing in the near future. The amount of upgrades you can do to your engine are basically unlimited, so go crazy with it. Another fun upgrade you can do that's also not very expensive at all is adding some lights to it. Maybe you're driving at night in a neighborhood and you need a place to see, well guess what? You can flick on those lights and you will, trust me, you will be able to see pretty good. <laughs> Oh my gosh! That is so much better. You can also do tail lights. It's something that we did as well. It's just a fun upgrade, and you can really, you know, express yourself with it. There's a lot of customizable light that you can get and make your own. This one we haven't done yet, but this is a very important one to have. We actually have this on our Murray go kart. Is a kill switch. Getting your throttle stuck is something that can occasionally happen, and if you have a kill switch, it can be very easy just to shut off your engine and stop as soon as possible and not just let your engine keep running. But we don't, because we're not safe. We <laughs> now, this is the most important upgrade. This should honestly, uh, we highly recommend this one. Right, Tyson? Of course. Yes. This is definitely the most important. Most important. Drummel, please. <laughs> Cup holder. Come on. Going 30 miles an hour down the road, and you're like, I'm parched right now. 
bowl. You don't want it spilling on you. you exactly. Know? You're not gonna hold it in between your legs. Exactly. And also, we've never spilled it on. No. Just, yeah. No. no. That's not happened. What a beautiful day to go on a ride on the go kart. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this video on everything that you need to build your own go-kart. Please let us know about your projects and if you have any questions, we are totally here to help. We respond to every comment that we can. Mm -hmm. Make sure you click the links in the description. That will really help you out when you're building your own go-kart. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed and felt, found this helpful. We make a ton of other go-kart videos along with the other, a lot of our other DIY projects. We have some great projects coming in the near future. Please subscribe, you won't regret it.